How we doing, everybody? Welcome again to another Ski Rex podcast episode, uh, Ski Rex Media podcast episode. This one is an extra one this week because we kind of got a last minute interview going on, and we'll get to that. Um, it came last minute because very last minute, I'm setting myself up to go up to Bretton Woods this weekend to see the Hall of Fame, the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame induction with all the inductees. And today I get to talk to an inductee. How cool is that? It actually makes it look like I have some legitimacy in journalism. Uh, Miss Holly Flanders. There she is. How are you, Miss Holly? Great. How are you? Excellent. Excellent, ma'am. Um, so let's get into it. Now, this woman um, was a racer. I know that. Um, that's about all I know off a of hand, which makes it fun because we now we have something to talk about. Um, and plus, what I also know is she kind of grew up skiing at a place I kind of love, and we'll get into that too. So, like, let's just start with who you are, what you do, how you do it. Go ahead and give your give you your your interview resume that other give people my are probably stats. okay. Your stats. My name, <laughs> my name is Holly Flanders. I'm a two time Olympian, winner of three World Cup downhill ski races. In the 80s, I was on the podium 10 times, I think, um, maybe six. Anyway, I, I didn't keep track of it. But um, won two national championships, and here I am today. I grew up skiing at Mount Sunapee, New Hampshire, and then raced at, for the Pat's Peak ski team and went on from there. Excellent, excellent. Now, Pat's Peak is a place I love. Which so as soon as I saw that on on uh, uh, on the on the notes, I was like, "That's awesome! I love that place. I've been there twice on my Indy Pass. I burned those days fast. Um, I really love that place. That place is great. Do you still go? I haven't been there in such a long time. I live out in Utah now, okay. and I have you know I have three kids out here. Um, they're mostly grown up, <laughs> but um, Pat's Peak holds holds a great you know place in my heart because. It was, I think I was 15 when I joined that race program. Jack Krantz started the program, and my sister coached there. My sister is five years older than me, and she was on the U.S. ski team. And at the age of 17, she was a really promising downhiller on the World Cup circuit. Okay. And she broke her leg, and then she started coaching when she was about 20 or so. And she taught us how to let our skis run. You know, when, when your skis are on edge, they're, you're slower. When your sure. skis are flat and they're floating a little bit, it's less secure, but it's faster. She taught us all that. And she also taught us to, you know, look at the nature and be a, a real person. You know, don't just be a ski racer, but be a well-rounded person and stuff. So it was a great, great program. That's awesome for a couple reasons. You bring up not only being a well-rounded person, which is great, especially when you're reaching the pro athlete level. So many sports have pro athletes who have these reputations of not necessarily being great people. Um, but more than that, you bring up nature. I'm always about that. I'm like, stop, pull your earphones out if you wear them. I don't. I'm I'm too I don't trust myself enough to wear them skiing. I swear I'm going to hit somebody if I'm if I'm wearing them. But uh, take a look around. Look at the birds. Look at the chipmunks and squirrels. I love that. And I mean, I live in rural Vermont, so it's it, nature's awesome. Yeah. And I love that and that you brought I, that up. I actually have a really good story around that. When I was making sure. my way up the World Cup ranks, I was kind of stuck on a plateau, placing twentieth in World Cup downhills. And I, I just couldn't move from that spot. And I started, you know, I was working really hard, training hard, pushing and pushing and pushing. And one, one day we were at a training camp in Solden, Austria. Mm. It was in the fall of, I think, 79, 1979 or so. And I, I was, we were having timed giant slalom training runs and I was, just about last in all of them sure. with the other women's, you know, U S ski team women. And I, I was thinking something's got to change. I, I really want to get off of this plateau. 
you know, if I'm going to keep ski racing, I, I really want to move forward. So I, I just kind of stood there and I let my mind go blank. When that happens, good things happen. And I looked <laughs> out at the Alps and I realized, whoa, look at those Alps. Look at those beautiful mountains. <laughs> look at those glaciers and the, the browns and the grays and the blue sky. I haven't even seen this. These, all these days that I've been here, I haven't noticed the beauty. So I, I'm like, wow, I get to be here. I get to do this. So I, I kept that mindset and I took the giant slalom timed training run and I won nice. with that mindset. And then I kept, you know, I, I got myself up to another level in my skiing by doing that. And I realized that Noticing beauty and opening yourself up and opening your heart is one of the keys to better performance. You put yourself in the state of mind where your heart is open and you're, you're flowing freely, you're going to perform better. And that goes for everything in life. When we're all stuck in our, you know, I have to do this, I have to work hard, we just, we can hold ourselves back. So that was a good lesson. Absolutely. That's an awesome story. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and I almost wonder if a lot of athletes, especially at international come the international level, um, do anything like that. Or I wonder if it's, it almost sounds like at that point you still realize there was something fun about it. And I, don't, I almost wonder how many athletes still think it's fun versus how many just, it's just a job. I you think know? that a lot of athletes know that you need to keep it fun but it is, it is kind of a job with pressure and different athletes have different methods of getting themselves to perform well. But to me, this is kind of a hack, you know, it's like, Whoa, look where you are. Take it in, take in the, find something beautiful, find something that opens your heart. That's a hack to getting yourself to a higher level. <laughs> That's <Right>. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, Geez, that's that that's like you said, that's great advice for anything, anywhere we do it and or should do it, even just for us recreational folks like we, you know, take a look around, let it flow. That's awesome. So as someone who is on the international circuit, do you still keep up with that? Do you ever work with them? Do you are you ever talking to them? Do you not care anymore? <laughs> it's <laughs> somewhere in between, I'm sure. Oh, my life has taken me away from it. I, I haven't been involved. I coach, like out here, I coach the Wasatch Freestyle Ski Team, believe it or not. Just the the young kids who want to, you know, ski the mountain, um, kind of the free skiers. I'll do a little bit of that. I ran women's ski workshops for years and years. Um, but I, I really lost touch of the of the U.S. ski team. And, you know, I don't interact with them much anymore just been busy i hear you i hear you do you watch on a on a um just as a fan level like were you checking out the olympics do you watch the world cup stuff do you go to any of the uh, races when they come through that way well i do i watch them sometimes i am too busy to travel around and you know watch go to the different events um i've you know i've raised kids and my son, Alex Schlopi, became a, a world champion, the first world champion in slope style skiing in 2011. And then he won the X Games in big air skiing and do tour and some world cups and things like that. And, you know, I've just been busy with my own family and my own trajectory, I guess. And that's cool because uh, I mean, I don't know how it was in your day, but like these days with someone who performs like Schifrin, she's a celebrity um, mm -hmm. as are every single man and woman. doesn't matter if you're placing. Obviously, it matters more if you're placing first. But even if you're 20th, you may not be known at the world stage. But when you go home, you're still a celebrity. Mm -hmm. um, but you are a normal, everyday, regular person who went about and did your thing. And I think there's a stereotype that like these celebrity athletes are celebrity athletes. And once they're in, they never get out. 
they're that for life. And I don't know where that stereotype comes from. It's a little weird. And I, I don't even know if it's really a thing or if it's just something I noticed. Who knows? But I like that I know it's not, I know it's not true. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I know that. I've, I, I've talked to a few racers and stuff. But it's a family thing. Your sister was competing. You were competing. Your son is competing. Who's next? Are you going to keep it going? Four generations? Five? Six? Whatever? Well, I've got a four-year-old grandson. I'm, I'm just ready to start teaching him skiing. <laughs> and he's excited. He just needs to come. He lives in Encinitas, California, so we need to get him out here and teach him. He's all uh-huh. excited for that. Oh, but I hope know, so. As long as, as long as they have fun. That's all parents want is for our kids to do well and have fun. Absolutely. Um, and snow sports can be fun. I tell everybody it's fun. Some people don't like the cold, but it's fine. You can do it yeah. in the warm now, too. It's fine. Um, so speak, you did say you're in Utah um, and it yeah. says here that you became the director of skiing at Park City. What is that? Do you still do it? I did. When I retired from ski racing, I was director of skiing for eight years at Park City Ski Area, it was called back then. And it was a marketing position where I I did a lot of uh, marketing functions, ski shows, uh, programs, going to, um, you know, working with all these groups and I don't know, it was a lot of stuff, but that was for eight years. And then I continued For three years, I was the director of skiing at Wolf Mountain, which was after Park West and before the canyons, which is now canyons at Park City. So, um, and then after that, I ran women's ski workshops up until four or five years ago. So, yeah. So many name changes over the years. I had to chuckle. Like, I hope I wasn't distracting or interrupting, but I forget that the canyons has changed names like however many times. And uh, even all the way back to the 90s, it was it was changing names. So that's that's awesome. All excuse me. Um, Excuse me again. God, I'm awful. Um, So um, you could see that Holly has been in it. Racer. um, Ski mom uh working at the mountains been a whole thing new englander like myself and now i don't think i said at the beginning what the reason did i talk about the hall of fame already i don't think i did um shows you how good i am is it monday i don't even know anyway a little bit (laughs) did i okay so that's why we're talking to holly today is because she is being inducted like i said i did say it up at Bretton woods the induction events are up there this weekend um, that should be a blast. Are you going to make it? Are you going to take the red eye flight in? Yes. I'm flying out tomorrow. So I'm excited. <laughs> Definitely right. making it for that. Uh, say I was just messing around, but that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Get it. Oh, well, that's yeah. great. Absolutely. Now, what is it like to go all these years? Like I said, I listed it off kind of tongue in cheek, but you were a competitive skier. You have been doing it, obviously, the majority of your life. Your ski mom, your ski grandma, hopefully. Um, what's it like now to see all that come together to be inducted into a Hall of Fame? Oh, I'm I'm very honored. It's 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 wonderful. I'm to be included in that group of people is is very humbling and honoring. I'm I'm excited. It's oh, just great. That is. It's awesome. Like this is a level that most people don't um, achieve, obviously. Um, so to get that now, what is the exact? I, I, this is going to sound like a very simple, basic, duh kind of question, but what is the exact reason you are getting inducted? Was is it lifetime of achievements? Is it something specific? Do you know? Well, they have um, a couple of categories, and one one is the athletes, and the other one is the the industry people. And as an athlete, I uh, I think it's my second in the overall World Cup downhill standings in 1982. It qualifies me for for the Hall of Fame, and that and the three World Cup wins. So um, they just they have a a, a big um, they have a group of people who vote on who should be inducted. They've got, got all their criteria and stuff. Excellent. Excellent. 
Excellent, excellent. So it's, I mean, obviously she's getting in, she deserves it. Um, unless you paid somebody off, which that's cool too, you know, whatever. Um, oh, I I'm, do that. say I'm not above a bribe. I'm not above <laughs> taking one. I'm not going to give someone one. Um, uh, but no, that is great. And you get to come home now. Are you just coming just to go to Bretton Woods and back, or are you going to hang out for a while? Why not? Well, I know I, I, I'm just going to come and stay for like four days. Yeah. And then come back here. Excellent. So, but I do want to come back again in the summer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but love New Hampshire. New Hampshire's wonderful. All of New England's wonderful. If you've never been to New England yeah. and New Hampshire and Vermont and these places, go ahead and check them out. They're great. Um, so you're coming out. You're going to be inducted. Um, have they given you a rundown of like what's going to happen? Is it just going to be everybody hanging out with Egan and then he's just going to hand everybody a bunch of stuff and we're all going to go home? Or is it a whole oh, to do? It's a whole to do. It's it's a well done, like well stage and it's a it's like a black tie not quite black tie but it's a it's a fancy dinner and you know the full people speaking and getting awards and it's uh, people take this very seriously it's going to be well done and very exciting <laughs> yeah I, I hope so I, I mean it looks like a lot of fun i don't know i've never been this will be my first time going. <laughs> um, so it's, yeah, so it should be interesting. Um, I'm going again, I'm, I'm the one man show, so I'm going alone. The only person I've ever spoken to there is Dan Egan. And that's just like I'm speaking to you here. So I'm going to be the whole new kid in school. Should be a lot of fun. It should be a lot of fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you're coming up this thing. Uh, the events are taking place um, at Bretton Woods, not at the mountain, but in the town. Um, at the Omni Mount Washington up there. Very fancy place. Like you can, when you drive by, you can't miss it. It's it's very nice. Have you ever been up in there, in that area there? And many years ago. Mm. I've been past it, but it's it was so long ago. It's beautiful. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, that part of New Hampshire is ridiculous. Like, um, it be is careful. Ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Be careful, though, going up over Cranmore Notch. Um, it gets snowy up there. Them snow squalls, they'll get you. Believe me, I oh, know. Right. Yeah, it's uh, you don't expect it, and then it hits you, and then it's like, oh, good, three miles an hour, awesome. Um, <laughs> excuse me. So we know they have their criteria, and obviously, you have a lifetime of achievements uh, coming up. And uh, what's what do you think it's gonna feel like as you get? Well, as we're coming closer to the day and whatnot, you're you're also being inducted with Brian Fairbanks, Seth Westcott, Howard Peterson, Sherman Poppin, names people may have heard of, may not, different levels of celebrity. What what does that feel like to be with this group of people, if that makes sense? Oh, it feels amazing to be included amongst those, you know, the people who have accomplished so much. I remember Seth Westcott, he seems like he won every single um, snowboarder cross race. Uh, he was the, the, you know, dominant for a long time. He's an amazing athlete. And of course, Howard Peterson, um, he, he was such a huge uh, player in the ski industry for years and years and years. And you know, it's just, it's very humbling. I can imagine. I can only imagine. And and again, I, I wonder, does it like from my end, it's it's like you're looking up and these names you heard again, some people have heard all these names and some haven't. I haven't heard them all, but I've heard almost all of you. Um, even if I don't remember exactly where I'd have every single statistic memorized, I'm impressed by those who can do that. I can't do that. Um, but I look up. And it is almost a celebrity thing. And again, it comes down to, like I said, it was almost a stereotype. Like, you you know, professional athletes are looked at celebrities. So I'm going to be looking up at that and be like, wow, that must be this completely mind blowing thing. These people are, you know, on a higher pedestal pedestal. And yet you're just you. What's it like to be on that and thinking, well, I'm just like all of you down in the audience, but you're looking at me different. If that, if that makes sense. It makes sense, but you know, I'm, I'm just used to it. I mean, I'm, I'm far enough out of it that I, 
I don't identify with that. That's not who I am, but it's a part of my past and I am uh, proud of it. And it did take a lot for me to accomplish what I did. It took years of practice and struggle and winning and losing and recovering and <laughs> from injuries. And <laughs> I mean, sure. it was, it, it was um, for me, I'm really proud of the things that I overcame to get to the level that I did. And I don't carry that, you know, that I don't feel egotistical about it or anything. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy that I did it. And I admire other people who uh, do things too, who accomplish things, but that's not everything. That's not who a person is. There's a lot more to a person than that. There, there certainly is. And that's, that's, that's one of the things I like to say, because, you know, uh, again, your day and today must be a little bit different since, you know, now we have the, you know, the internet and all this other stuff. And, yes. you know, we could, we could say we put you hall of fame inductees on a row and that's a very positive bit of celebrity. But then you hear again, uh, I hate to bring up Michaela Schifrin all the time because everybody else does it. It makes me look like a hack, but she's the biggest name in, you know, prof you know, professional skiing. But she recently took hate after hate after hate. Like, you know, some oh, awful man. stuff was said, but that's a very negative part of celebrity. Now, Again, your day was different, but you still had to deal with that, I would assume, right? Well, we did, but you're right. It's it's nothing like with the internet today. And I was I was thinking if if I had to deal with that today and, and how you know you always have to keep posting things and you have to keep your public image up and you're on social media and like wow, I I'm a really kind of a shy and reserved person. <laughs> how would I have done? that and you know worry about makeup and my image and, oh that would be tough but boy Michaela Schifrin is she is amazing she is um such a uh, it's it's so great to see how grounded she is and how she was able to go through all that and still remain strong I think she'll be back she's very impressive she's got such grace and what a true champion. Oh, absolutely. The woman's probably one of the best that ever lived. Um, yeah. I think she does have the advantage of being so young, 25. She's grown up with 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 social media and all this other stuff. Like it, she knew how to do that stuff when she was learning how to read goodness, Dr. Seuss books. I remember right. that's what I had, you know. And yeah. so she can deal with it a lot different. I know that if I were dealing with the hater stuff, I'd be throwing fingers and F words and stuff <laughs> like that. There, there is no grounded, but again, different oh. generation, different, whatever. And she will yeah. be back despite the haters who say she's washed up. She's finished. So she didn't win gold medals this time. I mean, it's not like she doesn't have a few hanging on the wall already. Like, right. Right. You know, right, right next to those nice shiny globes too. So say what you want, but you're wrong. That's what I tell these hater people. Um, yeah. And I had a whole point to go along with that, and now it's gone. But anyway, I'll get back to it. Um, but, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, the Hall of Fame, you're in there, very positive, like I said, dealing with the hate. You don't have to, which is good. And you better. I hope you don't that night either. If there's some fool there who causes some static, that'll be just awful. Um, you're coming I don't in. Think that'll happen. But. I, I don't think it'll happen. Um, but. Since you're going to be here, and it is the Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame, and um, I know there are skiing events. Are you participating in any of those? Yes. Yes, I'll nice. be participating. There are a lot of events going on for the weekend, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, there's a lot going on. I will only be making it to the actual main gala myself, but so many things like you're not wrong it is taken very seriously um not that i thought any different i didn't just think it was a fluke and i'm just gonna go up and be like whatever but man it is you know you don't want to compare it to a big award show but for the actual logistics of it the the professionalism of it it kind of is 
and it, it should be a good time like i said and holly's gonna be there and she's gonna be up on stage and that's gonna be great i'm gonna get a picture with her and have her well not sign it because we don't do that anymore it's all digital now but eventually i'll get it um <clears throat> it's gonna be good fun what's next then after this do you feel do you feel like wow now i'm in the hall of fame is it dragging you back into skiing more or will it that's a great question <laughs> actually i have a book that is pretty close to being finished and i'm excited to uh, come out with that it's kind of like um my story of going from worst to first it's kind of like the secret of secret to going from worst to first the seven decisions that determine your destiny the things that i learned on my way um going getting to the top and they um they really are pertain to life to everything in life too so i'm excited to come out with this book several years ago i i was mountain biking and i'm like okay well i'm at a crossroads in my life you know, kids are almost grown and this and that and this and that. Time to think about the next 10, 20, 30 years or whatever. And what is it that matters to me? What what do I want to do with my life? And what I, I really realized was that I want to uh, kind of make a difference and share my wisdom because I, I have a lot of wisdom. I've been through a lot. And so I started writing the book and it's taken quite a while. Kristen Cooper, who was on the U.S. ski team when I was, is helping me to edit it. She's amazing. And That's I think that this fantastic. book is, is going to be really motivating for a lot of people, really inspiring. Uh, I look forward to it, um, especially, like you said, if it's to be inspiring to tell the story that way, it's not just ski race, ski race, ski race, ski race, ski race, ski right. at home. It's actually a story. That's a brilliant and beautiful thing. Um, similar to Dan Egan's book, 30 Years in a White Haze, that came out. We talked to him on this program about that. It's a story. And now you get to tell yours, too, which will obviously be a lot different. That's two different types of careers, though not far off in generation. What was right. it like being a ski racer as people were moving into the extreme era? I know. I was looking at that going, oh, I could do that. That would be really fun. But by the time I got done downhill racing, 10 years on the World Cup circuit, my knees were gone enough that I'm like, oh, I, I kind of better not do that because I need to preserve what I've got now. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, that's That's actually kind of interesting to me because – you know, I, I, I often want to know and I often wonder, you know, you have professional athletes on every, you know, multiple disciplines on international competition or single disciplines over here or free ride or extreme people over there. Do one really want to be where they are? Or do they want to be over here instead? <laughs> well, you know, that. It's it's very interesting to me, especially with you, your generation, as you were coming out of racing, that's when the extreme movement was really starting to kick off. It was a whole new thing. Nobody saw anything like right. that before, at least not in the United States. Right. Um, that's that's very interesting to me. That would have been awesome if you would have got in a whole different name. Do your hair like Plake does it. That'd been great. <laughs> um, I, I would have if my body had stayed together. <laughs> That would have been great. Actually, you know, now since we've said that and you said before you teach the little free riders, that's that really seems you you dig on the and a son who's on who would do the um uh the action yeah, the sports people style part. and the big air skiing. Yeah. Yep. All the tricks. So that really seems like it would have been up your alley. Yeah, I think it I think it could have been, but I had my hands full trying to make it forward in the, in the yeah. downhill scene, you know, and, that took all I had. And that's cool too, for anybody who thinks that downhill, like you see downhill racing, if you think that's not an extreme sport, man, you got to see it in person. You got to go watch um, it in person. And I get it. People get bored watching baseball on TV, you go see it in person. It's a little different or, you know, right. whatever golf, whatever it is you look or auto racing, even you look at skiing, it's like, wow, they come down and they come down and they come down, go see it, go see it. So you could hear it and, and you can exactly. feel the wind. 
you hear it. I mean, they're so loud when they go by because they're going so fast. They're going 70, 80, 90 miles an hour on skis. And they have to they have turns coming at them really quickly and, and jumps and bumps and rough stuff. And, and they have to react. They have to be so on top of it. You have to focus so intensively for the whole two minutes, two minutes and whatever it is that the race takes. Because if you don't, it could be life and death, you know? Absolutely, Absolutely. it could. Yeah. yeah, people have gotten jacked up doing this. And again, I've said it for a long time. Downhill racing, especially the speed events, are they're extreme sports. Like I know we talk about, you know, tricks and aerials and even ski jumping and things like this, man, but Get out there and try it. Even try if you're a recreational skier like me, push into 40 miles an hour. That that that's shaky for me. Now you got to think of people doing 70, 80, and now that's giving me again sport across sport. As athletes, you know, we improve conditioning, we improve training. You're now pushing that in 20 years, someone's hitting 100 miles an hour and not yeah. speed skiing either, like an actual downhill race. Someone's hitting yeah. 100. Yeah, it's it's a ridiculous thing. Get out and see it. Like, and then from your end, um, you know, you can, now I've heard people talk about, they don't, they can hear the fans, but they don't acknowledge it. Is that a thing? You don't hear them. <laughs> you're, you're so focused. Okay. You okay. just can't even hear them. You, you might hear them after you've stopped and, you know, you let down a little bit and then, then you can hear them. Yeah. Cause I mean, if you're, if you're on site, I've been to two World Cup races, two in Killington in 17 and 19. I was here uh, both pre pandemic. I didn't go during the last couple that were held during the COVID thing. Um, and uh, man, it's it's a crowd like any other. If people, if fans of that sport are there and it doesn't matter the sport, if you go to a baseball game, it's going to be nuts. If you go to football, basketball, hockey, doesn't matter. You get down there, and it and obviously the home favorite. That's where they get the loudest. But even even when there's a you know someone coming down from a country you've never heard of, it's just rah rah. Yeah. But because the athletes have to focus, and again they are moving, they have to know yeah. it's not like me negotiating bumps. It's and that's if I have to. I don't ski bumps anymore. That's for people <laughs> with knees. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> but uh. No, you the know, competitors are all in. They have to be all in or they're out. Yeah, that's perfect. That's oh. absolutely it right there. And I, I'm impressed. I, I'm not easily impressed. And I, I would never say I could do it. Um, I couldn't, um, even at my best, I couldn't have done that. And some people say, well, if you tried and you learned and you trained, I was like, no, there's a bit of talent involved. I say <laughs> this to people. I don't know if this 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 matters or if this even makes sense. But I say there's a difference between know-how and talent. You know, everybody who's out there can knows how to do it. But the ones you see who are performing at their best, they find something inside of them, some piece of talent that makes it almost effortless. Now, I don't want to say effortless is a really bad way to say it because I don't want to say these people aren't working. They are. But it appears to me on the spectator, it just looks easier than it is. I don't even and know if that makes sense. That's because of all the hours and years that they've put into training to get to the point where it is sort of effortless because they've trained at it. They've paid their dues. And yeah. it, it is kind of effortless. You know, That's I, I, I can ski down the hill right now and it, and it looks effortless because of the 20 years of, that I put in training and training and training. I'm envious of that. I can't make it look effortless anymore. <laughs> I look like oh. horrible mess. I look like a beginner. It's awful. Well, do you so, have fun? Oh, absolutely. That's, that's it. That's what's most important. And and you're absolutely right. I tell people all the time, yes, I could go ski trees. Yes, I could go ski bumps. Yes, I could impress the girls over there. I don't care anymore. I'm just there to have a good time. Man. Perfect. That's what yeah. matters. That's all I do, and I do have a good time at small places like Pat's Peak. Um, never been to Cranmore, though, but I got to get over there one of these days. Well, this is awesome. Miss Holly, you're awesome. Like, this was great for such an almost impromptu interview. And I have to apologize to you and to anybody listening or watching. I did lose track my, my, my train of thought there, and how unprofessional is that? 
it happens. <laughs> no one's perfect. <laughs> I say nobody's perfect. Well, very good. So Miss Holly, she is going to be this weekend up there. If you're going to go up there, I believe there are some still tickets available to the public events. I don't remember exactly, and I don't know what the restrictions are, but you do need COVID testing or proof of vaccination masks. This stuff we're all used to doing now. Um, mm -hmm. She's here. I hope you have a good time. And again, watch out. What do you think in the next year or so of the book? Sooner if you can? Um, yeah, in the next, hopefully within the year. Okay. And then Excellent. I'll be doing some speaking too. So right. I just, my goal is to inspire people to be their best, to get up, you know, get up to a higher level. That's totally. And to me. And I bet you can do it. You seem so awesome to me. It's going to be fun. I, I hope I get to run into you while we're up there on Saturday. That should be a blast. Um, yeah. So watch out. Yeah, I watch out for, for you. Absolutely. I'll be around. I'm easy to find. I love the attention, so I'm easy to find. I'll be in the crowd <laughs> somewhere. Okay. Um, so Holly, Holly Flanders, very awesome. Pro racer, Hall of Famer, um, author soon enough. We'll get back in touch with her when the book comes out. I will read it and we will talk about it and that'll be a lot of fun. Thank you, Miss Holly. I do appreciate you doing this with me, especially kind of last minute. This is awesome. Thank you. My pleasure. It's been great. Excellent. And with that, my friends, me and Holly are going to get out of here. Uh, thank you for listening and watching Holly Flanders, all her information that we'll discuss after this to put, to put in, if she wants to plug social media or something, that'll be in the description, hall of fame information, description, my information, description, emails, social meds, all that stuff. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Later.